Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe to the page. And today we're going to be diving into Red Knight, issue number two, published by Manos Publishing. If you haven't, I'll leave a link so you guys can check out issue number one. And without further ado, let's dive in. So diving into this issue, we pick up where we left off in issue number one with Red Knight and the police officer going against Brick. Red Knight still being relatively new and a cherry to the superhero landscape. He's really unsure what to do in this situation. You have a family that's trapped and you have Brick that's tearing everything up. So the police officer takes charge and tells him that he needs to go rescue the family, that they're the professionals, they'll handle Brick. And so we see Red Knight take off and go to rescue the family. All while the police officer is trying to get Brick to stand down, to be able to get him to put his hands up, you know, turn himself in without this turning into something deadly. Simultaneously, Red Knight is rescuing the family out of the vehicle, getting them into the building, and we see the detective shoot Brick right in the eye, and this seems to essentially drop him dead. And all the other police officers are, are unsure how they were he, how she was able to do this, how the detective was able to take this guy down, and she let the officers know that the bulletproof superhumans are usually vulnerable through the eye so we we come to understand that she she has some understanding of how the superhero landscape works she's she's been doing this as a cop taking on villains and things of that nature as a police officer for a while now and then we see red knight take off we cut to the police captain's office and we learn that the detective who took down brick is named detective brown and her partner is detective edge and these two are really getting their their butts reamed by the the captain like everything went wrong in this situation there's there's so much property damage one of the vigilantes got away one of them is dead so they don't know where they were producing the stuff at so it's just a, a big giant mess for them but they do have two vigilantes in in custody and so they go off to interrogate them and this is where we find red knight's accomplices we see fireball and our other hero really getting interrogated and it seems like they're they're giving up their real names they're giving up a little bit of identity this is the first time they've been arrested so it's all relatively new to them and they're they're scared they're worried you know that they're going to go to jail and things of that nature and then this is where we cut over to really what seems to be the brains behind a lot of this villainy going on and we're met with mr sinclair and damien and these two are having a discussion about what happened what transpired the vigilantes that are loose and things of that nature and we find out that brick had essentially stole a stash of superhuman enhancing serum from these guys but they seem really curious in who the vigilantes are and that that's really interesting to the story because i don't know where they're going to go with that and they really want to find out who red knight is because that's the one vigilante that they haven't heard anything about yet but they do know that his accomplices the girl is named as wendy harper and the other gentleman is Ben Lee. Then we pick up with Red Knight at McLean's bar, his father's bar, and really he's just pretty much sleeping on the job and the waitress is really reaming into him. This is when we're met with Red Knight's uncle, Uncle Nathan, and he doesn't really come out and say that he is a superhero or anything like that, but he's definitely wanting to help Red Knight do vigilanteism. And so these two, you know, they start drinking, they're having a good time before they, you know, they plan the night's outing essentially so we're getting a lot of story building we're, we're seeing a lot of, of building up here and we're cut back over to our detectives and, and they're going over this old building where they had this missing children's case of 13 missing children and they were discovered in a mass grave and the bodies have been experimented on and there wasn't really any clues left behind or anything like that and so the detectives are thinking that this has got to be somehow connected like all of this has got to be connected in, in some way shape or form this just feels too out of place for this town and so red knight and nathan are preparing to do their nighting out and his uncle his uncle nathan shows him a, a pistol that he's created it's essentially because red knight doesn't like to use guns he doesn't want to kill people and things of that nature so nathan essentially created a gun that shoots gel bullets and these bullets explode but they are more like a gel in the, in its essence they're like bubble gum so they'll make the person stick to wherever they are stay in spot and it, it, it takes about an hour for it to break down and so they go patrolling the streets and they're really not finding anything going on like it seems just to be like a completely just boring night nothing happening and then we're brought over to Norfolk General Hospital and Pop Girl and Python are sitting in the hospital from the injuries they occurred during the raid that Brick had been killed in. And this is where we're met with Overkill and Surge. Now at first these guys seemingly be here to rescue these guys, but 
it turns out that these guys were here to assassinate them. And so we see a battle break out between the two. And we really think Pop Girl may have an advantage over Surge in this situation. But then we see a burnt Chris body lying on the ground with nobody else in sight. And then we see Red Knight finding a crime in the night. And he smashes down on top of these guys' car, puts two of the jail rounds into the window, and sticks them right to their vehicle. And Red Knight, he, you know, he is assuming he did something good and great. And, you know, he's like, I, I went out and I was a hero. Like, I'm the Red Knight, you know? And then people start yelling because the guys, the kids had just stolen beer. Like, they weren't doing anything, like, super crazy to, to instigate this escalation of force that the Red Knight brought down upon them. And so Red Knight immediately just, like, flees the situation. Like, he runs. And then we're brought to a closing, and, and we're giving some dialogue between these two villains, Overkill and Surge. They had taken out Python and Pop Girl, and they seem to all be working for a man named Dr. Banks. Everybody in here seems to be working for this guy. And their new order has been passed down that they need to take on, go assassinate the Red Knight. And this panel specifically just brings out the brutality of how these guys are, because Overkill literally ripped out python's heart like these guys just have no remorse or care or guilt they're just bloodthirsty killers and now they're going after the red knight and that will be where this issue ends let me know what you guys think i am absolutely loving the red knight series coming out of manos publishing i really think it's unique i really think that uh it's got a lot of potential going forward so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments and until the next video